In this video we're going to look at transport systems in plants. We're first going to talk about the need for transport systems and then look at the two different types of transport vessels, the xylem and the phloem. And we'll look at the structure and mechanism of movement for each. So firstly, why do plants need transport systems? Well, plants need water and nutrients so that they can grow and undergo photosynthesis. And the water and the nutrients uh, don't come or go to the same spot. So they actually need a transport system to move the water to the leaves and to move the nutrients out of the leaves. Now they've got two systems uh, that have specific structures. Firstly, the xylem. The xylem carry water and they carry water from the roots where it's absorbed to the leaves where it's needed for photosynthesis. We also have phloem, which transport glucose and other nutrients around the plant uh, and it goes from the leaf where it's created to any of the tissue in the plant where it's needed. So we'll look at xylem in a bit more detail. So there's three type of cells that make up the xylem tissue. The most important one is the trachea. So the trachea is the long cylindrical tubes and these carry the most amount of water. They have a thick double wall and around that double wall they're strengthened by rings of a polysaccharide called lignin. So the way these long tubes get made is that the cells uh, that were once there actually die. And we can see in this diagram here that as the cell grows, it sort of grows into uh, the size that it's going to be. It then dies and the inside of it starts to disappear and we get perforations to start with on the horizontal walls and eventually these walls break down and basically what we end up with are things that look like straws. And they also develop these pits on the outside of the wall to allow the water to come into the xylem or more importantly out of the xylem. The other two types of cells we have are tracheids, and these are smaller uh, tubes. They also do some of the transport of the water, but not as much. They have tapering ends, and their ends aren't actually fully open. They're pitted uh, at those tapered ends, and these are smaller. They're kind of like uh, trachea or baby trachea that didn't quite make it. And then around that you've got the parenchyma, which is another type of cell which is found in a fair few parts of a plant. And it is living cells and the plant uses it for nutrient storage. So here we have a micrograph of some xylem tissue. And you can see that those large round circles, open circles, they would be the trachea, while the smaller red circles around that are the tracheids, okay, so the little ones. And then we have the parenchyma, which are the other blue cells that intersperse those. Okay, so the three cell types found in xylem tissue. In this diagram, we can also see the lignin rings that are deposited around the inside of that xylem tissue in the trachea, uh, and they strengthen the structure and give it a woody texture. Okay, the mechanism of xylem for transporting water. Now, before we talk about how xylem work, I just, I'll just talk quickly about how water gets into the xylem. Okay, so on the outside of the root, where the water is in the soil, we have these minute projections called root hairs. And the idea of them is that they increase the surface area of the root and allow the root to be in contact with more water in the dirt cells. Now there's three ways in which the water can get from outside, so at the root hair, to the inside of the xylem. One of these is through osmosis and also through symplast and apoplast, so different ways of getting from the outside into the xylem. Now the movement of water once it gets into the xylem is achieved by three passive methods. So this is passive, none of these require energy to be spent by the plant. And we remember these three methods with the acronym CAT, C-A-T. So the first one is cohesion. Cohesion is how well water sticks together and sticks to itself. So this means that if there are water molecules further up the xylem, 
it, those molecules will pull the molecules below them up the xylem to them. The next one, A, for adhesion. Adhesion is the ability for the water to stick to the walls of the xylem and climb up those walls uh, because of its stickiness, and this is similar to capillary action. And lastly, we have the T, transpiration. So transpiration is the loss of water from the leaves to the atmosphere, and this loss of water at the top of the xylem creates a negative pressure which pushes or pulls uh, the rest of the water up the xylem. And this, this is quite amazing to think that some of those really tall trees, like the giant redwoods, uh, have these xylem vessels going from the bottom of them in their roots all the way to the top in the leaves, and there's no energy being expended to move all that water up. Okay, we're now going to look at the structure of phloem. Again, it consists of three types of cells. However, the difference between the phloem cells is that they're actually living cells. So when the xylem's dead, the phloem cells are living. So the main cell that makes up the phloem are called the sieve cells. Now, these are elongated cells that stack on top of each other, end to end. And at the joins between these sieve cells, rather than have a thick cell wall, uh, they actually have a special kind of membrane called a sieve plate. And this sieve plate allows for the easy transport and easy movement of the sugars uh, across or, and other nutrients across these sieve plates. So the main part are the sieve cells. Now because the phloem cells are alive, and in particular the sieve cells are alive, they need to do all the metabolic functions that living cells do, uh, undergoing respiration and whatnot. Now they can't do this. Their primary job and they're specialised to move things around uh, in them. So what they have is they have companion cells that hang around just outside them and that is where most of the metabolic function occurs and it sort of uh, pumps the products of that metabolic function like the ATP uh, into those sieve cells to keep them alive. And they do this through minute connecting tubes called plasmodesmata. Uh, and we also have the parenchyma being the cells around the uh, phloem, which are for storage of nutrients. Okay, so here we can see our elongated sieve cells, and we can see the sieve plates between the sieve cells. And so there's the micro pores on that. Uh, allowing the movement of uh, nutrients from one sieve cell to another. The mechanism of movement of nutrients around the plant in the phloem is called translocation. And translocation works from the source, so wherever the nutrient is made, through the path, being the phloem, to the sink, which is wherever the nutrient is needed. So the example I've used here is the source being the palisade cells found in the leaves, the path being the phloem, and the sink being a flower bud. So as a flower bud grows, it needs sugar uh, for energy. Uh, so that's going to be our sink. Now this, is, this method of translocation is active, passive, and then active again. So it's active to get the nutrients into the phloem, passive to move it around once it's in the phloem, and then once you get to the sink, active to get it out again. So firstly, the source. The nutrients are loaded into the phloem from the source wherever they're produced. Now this, there's a couple of ways that this can happen. It can happen symplastically uh, through the cytoplasm or asymplastically through the cell membrane. And then from those two, through the plasmodesmata into the phloem cells. Now this is an active process, which means that it takes energy to get those nutrients from the source, palisade cells, into the phloem, okay? That's active process. Once it's in the phloem, it just uses osmotic pressure to move around between the different sieve cells all around the plant. So this does not use any energy. Uh, it relies on the passive transport of osmosis. However, once it gets to the sink, it is then requires active transport to move it from the sieve cells in the phloem 
out to the sink where it's actually required. So this unloading through the plasma desmata again uses energy, is an active process. In this video we've looked at the need for transport systems in plants being that the things that are needed in the plant aren't made or found in the plant so need to be moved around. We've looked at xylem being the movement of water. We've looked at the structure being made up of trachea, tracheids, as well as some parenchyma cells that are around there. We've looked at the mechanism of movement for xylem, which is we remember as CAT, cohesion, adhesion, transpiration. We've looked at the structure of phloem being made up of sieve cells with sieve plates between those sieve cells, uh, the companion cells and the parenchyma surrounding those. We've looked at the mechanism of movement of nutrients in the phloem called translocation, which is an active, passive, active process moving from source path to sink.